Welcome, weary traveller, to the Downbeat Podcast. It's me, the guy from the Downbeat Podcast, who you probably, you might like actually. Quite a lot of people dislike me. But if you're listening to this and you dislike me, that is mental. You should be listening to anything else, basically. What have I been doing? Working incredibly hard, that's it. Podcast, I think I've got eight recorded three cameras 4k sweet guests sweet chats sweet quality i really need to pay an editor if you're liking these if you're liking the way they look if you're liking the way they sound patreon.com forward slash the downbeat um i got an extra special little plug for you on this episode my guest this week is jack bergen from void of vision we did this very, very special... If you're not watching this on YouTube, you're a fool. If you're just listening to this, I'll try and do it justice. We did an incredibly limited, special, downbeat variant of Void of Vision's three EPs. We put them all on one LP with insane death metal artwork by Koki Greenway, who did the previous downbeat collabs with Straight From The Path. The death metal artwork is, I mean, their, their EPs are called Chronicles. We've just called it Chronic, with a tiny little ulls. Um, and the art is like a crazy weed monster killing loads of Australian things. It looks absolutely crazy. It's my finest unhinged work. And on this podcast, we go into my thoughts behind making such a deranged piece of art. We go through Jack's I guess you say battle or ongoing situation with alopecia, with uh, a blood clot in his brain. I think I talked about pegging. We talked about horny goth stuff. A pretty insane story about them getting their visa. A bunch of cool stuff. It was a great little chat. I didn't really know him before this, and now I'd like to call him a friend. He's a great guy. Um, if you want to pick up a t-shirt, www.thedownbeat.at. So it spells downbeat. Um, we've got maybe we've got a US store by this point. If you're watching this on YouTube again, I'm wearing a lovely thing. Trying to still bridge the gap between only talking to the video people, and I know there's a lot of you on the audio, so I'm trying to not be annoying. Uh, display, we've got plug display. Uh, yeah, all of these things support me. Disclaimer you buy the Void of Vision thing at unfdstore.com forward slash Void of Vision. I get a little bit of money from each one sold. Not that I have to explain myself to you, but I also got a little bit of money for doing it anyway. Guess what else I get a little bit of money for? If you go and buy a display, a metal poster that you can mount on you all with a magnet at display.com and you use the code downbeat, I get a little bit more money from that as well. It's bloody lovely for me, money. It means I can put more into this. Huge guests coming because now everyone wants to come. Anyway, stop plugging. It's been five minutes of plugging. It's Jack Bergen, a void of vision on the Downbeat podcast. Kill me. <laughs> Perfect start. We're, <laughs> we're 44 minutes late. I've been rude to the rest of your band. <laughs> um, the camera's broke. We fixed the cameras, hopefully. If you're watching this on YouTube, it was fixed. Um, I'm here with Jack from Void of Vision. We're here. Who've just learned he's not playing Glasgow, it's Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Is it the, is it the, mash, the mash House? Yes, that, that actually is it. Is that it, Tom? Mash House? That's the one. Then you fucking rocks. Yeah. It's like... It's a little shoebox, isn't it? Little shoebox yeah. of shit. But <laughs> that's what the, we last the crowd's time. fucking mental. Well, that's it. Like, one person in these rooms moves, the rest kind of has to. Is it sold out? Yes. Of course it is. That's the other thing. Edinburgh's music scene now. Is it? Because oh, like, like, it's all art there at the moment, isn't it? Always sold out. I think yeah. it's 300 cap, that room. Always fucking sold out. That's good to see. What's the tour? It's Holding Absence, Void of Vision. Um, they're doing like just old catalogue kind of small regional shows, just UK. 
So there's no Europe, no nothing. And we got the offer and we're kind of like, mm, could do mainland, but at the same time, the idea of like two hour, one hour drives between every show, it's pretty insane. What? Late check out every yeah. day. And you can do a podcast that's 44 minutes exactly. late without, <laughs> exactly. without anything going wrong. This in. <laughs> um, that's a long way to go for how many shows is it? 16. And then we've got 16 the UK shows. I know. And then we've got the two headliners on the end. So good just good for them though. I know. And it's like maybe one or two not sold out. And yeah. 16. Good track record. I need to fucking, I need to pull up where they're going. <laughs> Some like, of these places. There's not 60, no offense to my UK brethren. <laughs> there is not holding absence. I don't know if I've got holding absence blocked. I think I have beef with them. <laughs> but, nah, we, we squashed the beef. You squashed the beef. Does beef not come out on the tour at all? No. Tom, you must know about this beef. Huh? My beef with holding absence. Not really, no. Not really, so he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whispering. I had some beef with him, but it was fine. It was... Uh, a thing on the internet. Internet beef, so it's not... Yeah. yeah. One, of them, one of them meant to post something from a burner account and accidentally did it from the band account and it was about me. It was a holding absence and it was a meme. <laughs> and it was like Craig Reynolds on the internet today actually, and it was a baby crying. I actually mentioned this and last night. You mentioned it, so you know about it <laughs> No, as well. no, the baby photo. That's right. where we were on, like, I was mentioning I was coming on tomorrow. Yeah. And they're like, oh. <laughs> Do you, but you know what? To my... I, I know what it was, right? Yeah. Because uh, let's just get let's get into it. And also, yeah, uh, can I please tell you, if I'm talking too much, mm -hmm. what I want you to do is interject and talk over me. Okay. Because Power play. the listeners of this podcast <laughs> that I love yes. are all subscribed on patreon.com forward slash the downbeat, which is only a pound. The, everyone else that just listens to it or watches yeah. it can't figure out if I talk too much or I don't talk enough. But that's what they're on it for, realistically. Well, apparently not. Some of the comments are like, you fucking talk too much. <laughs> well, the Patreon people are on it for that. And they are the people that are really fucking nice. And the Craig stands. So I'll tell you this story and then we'll talk about you for the rest. Uh, you, <laughs> then you'll talk Exclusive. about you for the rest of the thing. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm uh, this one I need a producer to pull up the dates so I can laugh exactly. at which cities they're playing. So for the record, I don't have beef with Holden Absence anymore. They're very Squashed. good. They're a very good band. Squashed beef. Insane. The beef was mm -hmm. someone, obviously, there was bigger fucking things happening in the world at the time. It was uh, BLM, George Floyd. Stray did a charity shirt. Mm -hmm. Someone on the internet started being very annoyed at the cost of shipping for the charity shirt. Mm -hmm. And I fucking smoked this kid on the internet. I was like, fucking this for charity, you fucking idiot. Like, yeah. Admittedly, Probably in the worst headspace of my entire life at that point, and I'm pretty, as you've seen today, I'm pretty bad with stress. Oh, st <laughs> <laughs> stress management is good. I'm, I'm terrible with it. Yeah. And um, then one of Holding Absence, so it was a big thing, then one of Holding Absence, mm -hmm. it was actually Ash the drummer, I know this, okay. but we squashed the beef. Like, he's good. a lovely guy. He is. Very tall, didn't realize he was that tall. They're a mammoth band. Mm. It's insane. And um, yeah, like very a, tall boys. Giants. <laughs> Uh, he was supposed to post it from his burner account, uh -huh. <laughs> which was funny in the first place. Like a meme account. Yeah, like okay. a meme account. Um, Craig Reynolds on the internet today, mm -hmm. which is a crying baby face. Mm -hmm. And it was accidentally posted from Holding Absence. And what I must apologize for, it was, it was literally during... I was also going off on one about the George Floyd thing, yeah. about police killing this guy. Of course. And I retweeted Holding Absence's thing, and I said, I didn't know Holding Absence support the murder of an innocent man. And then oh. that, that was when it was like, deleted. I got a message from I was like, oh, we're really sorry. Bro. And I was like, <laughs> fucking got ya. I knew they didn't fucking mean that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then we squashed the beef, and it's fine. Exactly. No, they've been very lovely, and that, but that is very funny. <laughs> And then, oh, do you, know, do you know what? Faisal from Loathe, mm -hmm. Tom, sorry, we've got Tom off camera. We've got Tom, Tom who is um, on camera, but off camera, <laughs> doing photography and stuff for you. Uh, Faisal liked the tweet, and then uh, I hated Faisal from Loathe for a bit. And then I realized I was being petty. And then I let you stay at my house. But I think Faisal still doesn't like me, even though I've squashed the beef. Tom? 
that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't hear that because of the sound. noise gate. If you didn't hear that because of the noise gate. Yeah. I think you're all right. Well, he stayed at my fucking house when he needed a place to stay. That's I like him for the record. In my I, I like I like everyone for the record. I've got a new new year, new me. New year, new, <laughs> new persona. So, what's the how many dates in are you? We're six dates in. So, six last night, seven today. Can you reel them off? Do you know where they were? It was Exeter, Oxford, Leicester. Yes. S- without order, it was Sunderland last night. There was oh my god, Lincoln. you played the independent. Yes. Has it still got carpet floor? Yes. How disgusting is it's, that? It's um yeah. These are interesting venues. This is like I'm Although really... some are quite flash from what I've more than I expected to be fair. O two Oxford Academy. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean that <laughs> Lincoln was really nice. It was like this really done up sort of larger scale venue, considering not many bands. I'm pretty sure like the only band from Lincoln is what are they called? Is okay. it Mutter Defiled? I can't I can yeah, tell you. Sure, I don't know. Lincoln, Jesus. Exeter, Oxford, Leicester, Nottingham, Lincoln, Nottingham. Sunderland. I used to live in Oxford and I used to live in Nottingham. Sunderland, Edinburgh, Hull, Carlisle. Oh my God, you are playing. Have you ever played any of these places before? You ever been to Hull? No. One letter away from hell for, <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> Carlisle, Liverpool, Liverpool Stoke-on-Trent, Bristol. This is literally like a my old deathcore band routing. It where is was, a bit of a deathcore tour. Where was the best so far? Uh, best was... Honestly, last night was pretty ready. But first show in Exeter was surprisingly great. Just nice to kick it off. I can't see because they're all sold out. Was it... I was going to say, was it the cavern? But it wasn't. It says P. No, was it, it was P? a... Where was it in Exeter, Tom? It was like a... Ah, Phoenix. It's like this arts kind of centre. And there was weird like little galleries in there. And I'm not too sure what they used that place for, to be honest. It was just all over the shop. Arts, establishment, installations... Uh, it was strange. But. I once uh, stayed in Exeter after playing the cavern. I don't know if the statute of limitations has gone. Again, oh, he talks too much. Get fucked. Don't listen. Um, <laughs> on a tour, I'm not even going to say whose tour it was, and um, we didn't have a place to stay, and some random girl in the street let, and she was like, oh, she, oh I'll let you stay at my house. It's just some random. And you took her up on it. And she was moving out the next day, and she gave us the keys three bands a whole tour the keys to her flat that she was moving out of the next uh-huh. day and we stayed in this flat and she didn't and that was oh, I can only I can imagine she didn't get her deposit back <laughs> I mean what did she that? expect I know fucking you're mental. only gonna have it yeah that's not really a wise did she know it was bands yeah but that was like back in the day when like when you do a tour and you'd have nowhere to stay and you would literally just be walking in the street and go sorry you ain't got a place to <laughs> stay have you <laughs> don't mind if we just pop in it's like being yeah. homeless a little bit it really is it's glorified homelessness other, th- other than yeah glorified good yeah it didn't mean it was it was anything like it obviously it's horrible <laughs> you're not gonna get me guys no <laughs> one's gonna get me it's un- good. <laughs> um, um, no I'm not even gonna say it that, <laughs> that's fucking cause someone someone will get me <laughs> um <laughs> Let's, do you want to you go straight into the sort of... It's not a bought reason that you're here. No, no let, yeah. Let, let, let's, we're going to get to it because actually the intro of this, well, I'll have already plugged it mm-hmm. on the intro. Oh, good. Chronicles. Really? That's it. Three EPs. Three EPs. What's the reason? Three different EPs. So had the record essentially written or began writing and we realised... This is like, I don't know, it's a lot to put this all in front of people. We're still a band who's yet to have like a, a coming of age moment or like a, a real proper land yeah. on the music industry. And I think just putting out an album of just everything that's on this without staggering it would have been a bit full on and not necessarily gotten the ears it deserved. Plus it was COVID and we wanted to kind of just like stretch things out because we didn't know when the fuck touring was going to be back. We didn't want to drop an album halfway through a pandemic and not be able to fucking take it around the world. So, yeah. yeah, stretched it out and it kind of luckily just completed when international touring came back and we got to take it around. So, so it was tracked as if it was going to be an album? We tracked it. Um, well, we pre-proed it as if it was going to be an album but then kind of went in. So we basically wrote, recorded, released, wrote, recorded, released, wrote, recorded, released. So we had like the the game plan essentially yeah. that we knew the first one was going to be heavy as balls. Um, second one's going to sort of head into a bit more of a dramatic flair. And then the third was just going to be all that EDM. And 
yeah, we kind of just basically went in with that game plan and then just wrote on the fly. And it was cool because it was like an exercise we've never done before and putting the pressure on ourselves, especially that third one because all of a sudden touring came back and that necessary game plan didn't work as we expected it would because yeah. when you're on the airport floor in Singapore airport sending back mixed revisions, it's not exactly the best spot to kind of, Fuck. yeah. Watch. Were I you, uh, is that a, a real story? Singapore yes. airport mixed yeah. revisions? That's it. So our journey to get our visas for the, the United States was a bit fucked because COVID just kind of derailed every visa appointment, I guess. I'm sure you've had difficulties with this too, being from here. And basically we had to go to Indonesia to get our visas. So oh. we went, all the consulates in Australia, in Melbourne, Sydney, et cetera, booked out. Next to Tibet was probably London, booked out. And we were trying to just fly to New Zealand or anywhere London. close. Yeah. It was like the last appointments left on earth. And all of a sudden, two weeks out of US, no appointments, no visa, sign off. And we're like, we're not going to go. Our lawyer comes through last minute with, we've got an appointment that's popped up for you. Are you ready for where it is? And we're like, shoot, we're just going to fucking do it. It's in Surabaya, Indonesia. And we're like, okay. And we've basically just thrown all the money on flights. We've headed over to Indonesia. Well, to be fair, it was myself first. We were all on separate different appointments like throughout the week. Oh, my God. You couldn't even make a little couldn't even make the same holiday day. out of it. Well, the other boys went to Bali while, huh? <laughs> while I went straight in the fucking deep end. I've gotten off at the airport. Unsure of what this area of Indonesia is realistically like because in my head I've just got Bali, uh, Jakarta and all that type of things. And Surabaya is like not even a business district. It is something very strange that I wasn't really prepared for. Even Jakarta is pretty fucking out there if That's you've never been. That's what I been. mean. Yeah, like it's it's something else. And that was probably the first time I've gotten real culture shock. So basically I've hopped out at the airport, I've gotten into – oh, I booked like a – not a courier. I booked a driver to kind of take me to my hotel um, as soon as I've gotten out of the flight. But just had no idea where this motherfucker was. It was just not – and I've picked up a SIM card. I've gotten scammed for a SIM card at the airport, which is a great start. Oh, no. One gig of data. Ran out as soon as I got outside. Not one gig. Fake. One meg of data probably. And I've hopped in this taxi – and the bloke's not really too familiar with the English language and he's basically been taking me around and I've popped in the address. And I think the idea was behind he didn't want to take the toll way, but he didn't communicate that very well by just like continuing on and ignoring every word that I said. Mm. And I'm kind of starting to stress out because I'm looking at Google Maps. I'm going the exact opposite way to the hotel. And he just keeps driving at this stage. Oh, he's going God. the complete fucking wrong way. And I'm like, okay, this is definitely wrong. So I'm kind of just pulling out Google Translate on my phone. And I'm like pressing buttons and like trying to like, because I've obviously gathered that he's not really taking on any word that I'm saying. And I've kind of just resorted to putting stop in Google Translate and he just keeps rolling forward. And so I've got stop and I've pulled out the money next to it. And then he's pumped the brakes. And then I've absolutely kind of just thrown him all the money that was left like that I booked out. I think you have to pay for the Indonesian visa on arrival and I just had change. And I would have had to pay him anyway. So I've just dropped off on the side of the road. What did you do? I basically got – because there's these weird little stalls. Basically, it's so bizarre how this, like, town is set out. You have the airport and then all of a sudden it just turns into nothingness. No buildings. It's just little stalls, like little markets along the way. And there's ones that sell Wi-Fi there. And so I basically just walked along because I was kind of – yeah, I don't know. I was in, like, a state of just – it's kind of adrenaline, weirdly. Oh, yeah. I'd be like – it was survival instinct. Mo- yeah, what yeah. movie I'm in. Because even Jakarta is fucking like, there's some dodgy shit. Oh, for sure. And I had that in the back of my head. I'm like, what's this guy? Is this guy going to just drive? try to drive off with me? Doors were locked. And basically I'm like, do I need to like, and I'm sitting in the back too because it was still like COVID precautions or whatever. So I'm like, I'll be nice. I'll like just let this guy have it. I'm like, do I need to like hit this dude in the back of the head or something to make this car stop. Like I, that's yeah, the first thing that popped my head. to jail. You're exactly. Jail in Jakarta I'm not coming home. Yeah, not going to America then. You're getting, no visas. <laughs> yeah. A couple, couple of hands cut off. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, yeah, basically you've got my Wi-Fi card on the side of the road and I've booked the, uh, what's it called? Grab, which is like the taxi service over the Uber service over there. Got into my hotel, which was like an Ovo, you know, how Wembley's um, yeah. that Ovo brand. So it was an Ovo. It's not anymore. It's just a completely faded sign out the front. Oh, They've like taken the sign nice. off, pulled out, just dead cat in the front door. 
next to a trestle table, which was reception. Dead cat. Yeah. Dead domestic Dem- cat. Dead domesticated no tail cat. Seems like no cats had any tails there. It was quite rough to look at. Interesting. And pulled up to reception and it's just this bloke smoking a cig- cigarette and I was kind of just wondering if this is the actual hotel and he's like, oh, yes. And then he's taking me up to my room, no shower, no toilet, no TV, just pretty much a bed. And I'm sat in there and I'm just sitting there basically of – Waiting because my visa appointments the next morning. I smell like a foot because I slept in the Singapore airport floor the night before. (laughs) Was this this was for the August tour? Yes, August twenty twenty two. Yeah, who was that with? August Burns Red. We came as Romans. That's that's worth sleeping on the floor and then in some sort of hostage environment. It was a good tour, but then yeah, that night, lucky. Well, no TV, no shower, no toilet, but they had Wi Fi. Which is great. So you can wank. <laughs> <laughs> Every cloud. There's no way you didn't have a wank. Come on. I did. Yay! And basically, we basically had, I don't know, our visa appointment the next morning. I've managed to message the guys because they were booked for that hotel too. I'm like, do not come here. <laughs> Try and find somewhere else. They've tracked down this other place, which is a bit more central. It was near like the biggest mall in Indonesia. So it's a stark difference, 10 minutes down the fucking road. Yeah. And we've gotten there. And basically, I went to my visa appointment, shoe in, it was fine. Like, it was so funny. The final boss, I've just gone through, because I've gone there to an Australian consulate and there was not an Australian person in sight. Yeah. I'm just dealing with just all these Indonesian authorities and it's just people with guns everywhere and it's just really, really threatening. It's yeah. not a great aura around the place. And I've basically just rocked in and the final boss, the man who signs me off, he's like, oh, you're in a band. And he's the only American guy there. And then basically he's kind of quizzing me on heavy music. Classic, and, the visa people. And then he's a huge Christian metal fan. And he's asked if we've heard At The Gates and <laughs> all this. And then he's absolutely... Wait, At The Gates isn't Christian. I, actually, they're not, aren't they? <laughs> Probably the opposite. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, I love Christian music. At The Gates. I assume it means Gates of Heaven, not Hell. <laughs> he hasn't quite hasn't clued fucking in. fucking read into it. <laughs> I just like the music. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> it is good. And then he's just stamped away. And that gave me another adrenaline rush and I'm off to this brand new what, hotel. What did you say? Like, because he would have said, he would have said, does it sound like at the gates? Or does he say anything does like Does it sound like Parkway Drive? Because he heard the Australian accent. And that was oh, what got yeah, me. Yeah. Because yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, you. Boom. Yeah. You're getting you know. that. Yeah, absolutely. The, be- and, the, the best I've had is um, the one that I always get like, because I obviously, if I'm talking to a, a normal person, mm. a, G, a, G, a GP, general public civilian, I'll say, I'll say, do you know Rage Against Machine? And then I go, yeah. And I go, it's like that, but a bit faster and a bit scarier. It's your border control and, story. But no, border oh. control. You can't say, do you know Rage Against oh, the yeah. Machine? <laughs> The you know anti-government. The, you know the band that's against everything that you do? <laughs> yes, that, we sound like them and we're pretty much like them. So <laughs> for those ones, I'm like, do you know death tones? And they go, yeah, kind of. I was like, it's a bit like that. And it's like, <laughs> there's like four riffs like that. Or they'll go like, oh, oh, like Metallica. And I'll be like, yeah, like yeah, Metallica. Yeah, of course it's like Metallica. The worst one I had, right? And this is this was my, this was early in my, like, getting the visas. Because yeah. it's quite intimidating. It's yes. quite early in my having to go to the US embassy visa situation they really do quiz you it was actually at the border mm. and it was uh, like like just ask me a few questions oh is it like Pantera is it like, and I was like okay well this guy likes metal yeah. <laughs> but metal um, and I was like yeah I guess it's kind of like Pantera and he was like what about Tool and I was like I fucking love Tool like, it's like one of my favourite bands and he was like have you seen the Me Too people are coming for, for Maynard and I was like, this guy's a cop. <laughs> and I was like, no, I haven't. And he was like, they're ruining everything, man. A police officer. And I was like, oh, all the stuff everyone says is true. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was like shocked. And I was like, no, can I come in, please? That's intense. Oh, my God. So you're just having to sit there haphazardly, but just now, smiling along. Yeah. Now I've got the... Uh, Whatever the big, the big dick visa the is, the big boys, the, the big, O's. The, yeah, big which dick we one luckily for the, got too. For which the, was for the t- you got an O as well. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. You know who it is? It's fucking UNFD. They're so sick and good at what they do. Get get that one, and when you go to the border, they go, "Oh, boom, welcome." It's awesome. They think I'm fucking a celeb. 
I'm <laughs> fucking saunter in. I'm getting a little bit Billy Big Bull. On the Matt Damon it. visa. Yeah, um, right. So, but not to derail. Mm. The thing, while it's still on that story. Yes. Because I've yeah, there's been some mad shit. Always, you know, not to tar him with a brush, but mm. it's always in Southeast Asia. <laughs> like the it weird shit happened. Be. Yeah. But usually I'm with the rest of the band, so it's funny. Yours just sounds terrifying it was terrifying until the boys got there as the biggest sigh of relief i mean i was great because like i got the visa stamp and all of a sudden i was on a bit of a just a high like i was just like yeah this is kind of great and so we've gone and visited this biggest mall in indonesia which isn't that great it's i mean plays the service but yeah um i don't know the boys came in that night and they had their appointment the next day and the thing was oh what happened they didn't – the guy was so excited about this concept of a heavy band coming to Indonesia to get their stamp signed that he didn't give me uh, this receipt that oh, – there was another – there was like a fee, there was like a printing fee or something that needed to be paid like for it to go into your visa. And he was just so caught up in the moment he kind of left without giving me that. And luckily um, our drummer, our fill-in drummer who we bought for that, he managed to – he brought it up to this fill-in drummer and he's like, oh, I forgot to give your friend this receipt. Oh, so if fuck. he didn't fucking fucked. grab that and we were, yeah, we missed the first three dates of that US tour because we flew straight there, straight in. So it wasn't great. You went straight from Indonesia? Sorry, it was like Indonesia, Melbourne for a few hours, then to Indone- then oh. to America. But yeah, we missed the first three dates, um, dropped in on like show number three. And yeah, honestly, like that tour was well worth it because – the weirdest part was it wasn't even A markets. It was like B, C, D markets, which seems to be an ongoing trend like this tour that we're doing. <laughs> but the people it works. Are hung, the people are post-COVID, like a, I'll take a fucking B and C market of people. Absolutely. The whole thing in America for me is like flipped post-COVID. Like it used mm. to be, I used to hate LA shows and I used to love Texas shows. Texas shows are the fucking, oh, have you flipped now? I'm f- I flipped. I flipped and Texas... It's kind of shot and LA is kind of sick. Interesting because we didn't do LA at all. Usually, it's, it, historically, I've never played a good show there, but now for some reason people care. I don't know. I don't know what's happened. Something switched. Something switched. And Texas I love Texas over. as a fucking place. Like, yeah. I love it. Possibly like Austin, probably love it more than LA. Yeah. But the shows are like, I'm sorry we can't be Kubla Khan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the problem. That's the issue. They're expecting more of that. But yeah, get this. Pull pull this up. Let's 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 talk about this. So, I've, got the second day I've had a few people. All right, smash the place up. <laughs> I've had a few people. If you got, if you're not watching this on YouTube, I spent a lot of fucking money for you to watch it on YouTube. So watch it on YouTube. What we got here is, if anyone remembers the downbeat, which is the podcast you're listening to right now, mm-hmm. did a special edition of Euthanasia by. A by Stray From The Path, um, where it was death metal artwork by Koki Greenway, who's known to be do- to do artwork for bands like Aborted and stuff. And uh, what we've done is we did a special one with Void of Vision. We're on the same label, and um, I like the band. So particularly, we'll get into it, but particularly the EPs, and we'll talk about why in a minute. But um, so when I got hit up by our label and was like, do you want to do another one of these collab things? And have you got any ideas? I was like, funny enough, and do you know what? The idea came to me in fucking one second. You replied to that email within... And I was like, well, I've got it. <laughs> so They're Australian, it, <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> they're Australian. The album, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to hold it up. Um, the album's called Chronicles, but our version here, which is all... Uh, sorry, the EPs are called Chronicles 1, 2, and 3, and they have little sub, sub names. But what we've done here is we put them all onto one vinyl... Um, and the artwork in a death metal style is a, a giant weed monster. I was, I'd watched Scary Movie 2 the night before. So <laughs> it was like, it was immediate. I was just like, okay, I know what we do. Was it, was it called Chronicles? Okay. Ours is called Chronic. And it says, oh, it's really small. Um, and there's a giant death metal weed monster ki- <laughs> killing, um, what's his name? The real, what's his actual name? Uh, Paul Hogan. Paul, Paul Hogan, Hogan, a.k.a. Yeah. Crocodile Dundee. Uh, some koalas, there's some boomerangs, there's some kangaroos, and my la- my final one was empty bottles of fucking VB. Fucking VB. Fucking mate. VB, you <laughs> dog cunt. 
Um, and some ga- uh, some fucking alligators or crocodiles you got? Crocs. Crocs. Yeah. Crocs. Um, and it's on. What's the official name of the colour? Orange gelato. <laughs> Orange gelato. <laughs> which I can't remember if that was my idea or we all had the idea. I think you had that idea from the... Uh, and if anyone was speech. anyone was burnt with the Stray From The Path one, which came and it was too hard to get out of its sleeve. This one's actually very easy to get out of its sleeve. And it's in orange gelato, which is orange and green. It's very nice. It is. Look at that. And it looks like bud. It really does. And that's it's got that. That spins around on it. Uh, it's a pleasure doing stuff with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially because, yeah. right, we'll get into this. Mm-hmm. When your band used to come up, yes, back in the day, mm-hmm. no offence. Oh, none taken. I, I'm f- expecting. And I fi- <laughs> <laughs> Why does everyone hate me? Um, <laughs> I filed it under sounds a bit like architects, which is what I, I have to do quite a lot of the time. It is true. But what I'm learning mm-hmm. is instead of me opening my mouth, which I didn't actually with you guys, um, label mates. <laughs> Get away, with it. Get away with it. Get away with it. Just let these bands. Because when I started a band, I'm, I'm getting. I think it's in my old age. I'm mm-hmm. getting like more. I see the world in like a wider lens. So I'm like, when I started playing a band, it was just, it just sounded like fucking Sepultura. And if Sepultura <laughs> had heard it, if the technology had existed for someone who was friends with Sepultura to hear it, they'd go, that sounds like fucking Sepultura. Fuck off, you fucking idiots. <laughs> so like, <sighs> Polaris, mm-hmm. you guys, mm-hmm. even, nah, Bad Omens is more Bring Me, but like, yeah. these bands that start heavily influenced, if you just shut your fucking mouth and let them get on with it, eventually they figure out their niche <laughs> and they the end thing. up, you end up liking it because you like the other stuff because I fucking love architect. Absolutely. So the minute you guys got a little bit goth, I was like, what's going on what's, here? What's going on here? <laughs> and then you got Cynthia. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. Historically, if, if you put... Two and two. If you put some synths in and some goth, I'm fucking in. Cyber goth revival. So, Chronicles, mm-hmm. particularly Chronicles 2, mm-hmm. pretty fucking gothic. Is Chronicles 2 the one where the first track's literally called Burgain? Burgain, yeah. <laughs> Have you been? <laughs> no. Uh, George is um, born and bred in Berlin, and yeah, we just has wanted to nod. I don't think he has. She so moved here when he like was 16. My girlfriend's been. Oh, really? Yeah, she's oh, been. she'll tell you some stories. Because like... we had it lined up. We were coming out with Loath last year. And there was a day, well, a night that was freed up. There was day off afterwards and it was like 10 minutes from the venue. Yeah, it's so close to like Cassiopeia and all yes, that stuff. that's it's, where we were it's playing. It's literally around the corner. Yeah. So I've never been, but I've I've gone. Can I get you to just move oh, closer? Sorry, to the yeah. sorry. Um, I've, I've never been, but I've gone and like just... Checked it. Just checked out the, the line. Like, it's fucking insane. If dude. anyone doesn't know, Berg, Berghain is... Uh, I can't pronounce it in German. He's a... <laughs> It's a fucking, essentially a sex goth industrial club in Berlin. It's a monstrous idea. And it's, you know, from what people that I know that have been, is like, it's just everyone's naked and fucking and going like doing fucking drugs. And it's awesome. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like, yeah, that's what we wanted that song to sound like. So, and, it, <laughs> and, it, and that's what like, it's the same with like Ramstein and like, yeah. that's the shit I love. Apparently, yes. I don't know if this is actually true, but. Apparently in like the 90s, that whole street where all of that stuff is on. Yeah. Apparently in the 90s, like Ramstein bought loads of apartments in that place. That's true. And like essentially just like live off that and spend all of their money that they make from the band on the production of the band. And because they just make their money from living in these or owning these apartments on that strip. Might be a rumor. I, it wouldn't surprise me. That band has the craziest, weirdest history. Like Till's and they fucking spend a lot of money. Yeah, Till's just hu- history as a human being is fucking insane. So it wouldn't surprise me that. Yeah, that that checks out. Isn't it weird that you can like? I fucking love that band, and I fucking oh, love him. It. But like, if someone else came out with a song about abortions, like they would get fucking absolutely rinsed. And he's just like, his solo project, the song that's literally about how I won't wear a condom, I will just abort the child. 
<laughs> is fucking insane. I'm sure there's some like deeper meaning to it, but Absolutely. I'm surprised he gets away with it. It's insane. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Like I feel like in this song fucking rules, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That band just is, yeah, historically, everything they've put out just so, like, I don't know, politically heavily charged, it's always met with just mm. not what, I don't know, it's like a cutoff for bands to release topics like that, I feel. It's it's a bit odd how it works. He must be being clever about it. Also, for the record, I don't think it's fucking awesome for the, no. for the actual thing. Just wear a condom if you're listening to this, basically. Um, consensual, wear a condom done you can't get me uh incidentally as well as not being able to get me it's actually what i believe uh <laughs> but like i feel like everything that they do has like a deeper political meaning oh absolutely oh, i just with that song i didn't really go into why i haven't, haven't really checked it out i mean he's like full author mode now like just yeah he's poetry too isn't he like it's just a whole game for like i don't know he's big time artist and i think because he's just so into the visual side of stuff too like as you see in all the new Ramstein videos it's fucking stupid like the it's production crazy is, it looks like movies yeah it's it's so insane the Deutschland video was like I think it cost multiple millions yeah it blew my fucking mind I couldn't believe what I was watching like I remember exactly where I was when it came out actually that's how groundbreaking it was like JFK dying like <laughs> where, where were you when Ramstein released, <laughs> released the Deutschland, Deutschland video I was actually on Will Putney's sofa Watching that, I woke up and Tom was like, "Have you seen the new Ramstein video?" I was like, "No." And then pops it on, pops it on. It's fucking amazing. So, back to the Chronicles, of course. <laughs> Who's doing the synths? James. So he basically, we're basically this whole experience kind of stemmed from the album prior to this. We worked with John from North Lane yep. um, on a few I tracks. Had a, I had. A, conversation about synths with john from north lane sat in that chair about four days ago <laughs> i can i can uh, feel them everyone's gonna be like <laughs> why do you keep talking to australian people about synthesizers <laughs> <laughs> well i'm about to bring in a british element too because have you heard of a band called modern era from here mm -hmm. so kel is a boy genius and he's a lot more in the analog world which john also dwells within but um we worked a bit with kel on um this on this chronicle series with some of the synth work too um james kind of built a lot from scratch but i think we're still learning how to incorporate the warmer sounds and just more like actually dialing in tones and that sort of dial but yeah we've basically kind of worked upon that and we're building as that sort of band now and i think like we're at the stage where touring is fucking expensive and we would love to have pay a session musician to come out and also hit parts but yeah, we're just trying to work out how to incorporate in the set. I think headliners in Australia, it's no stress. It'll be so much fun to actually do it live and have James like taking yeah. a bit of a live producer seat on stage. But um, yeah, it's all just a matter of working out the live formation for time being. But yeah, James is the master genius behind all the synth work and he knows what he's doing now. It's awesome. Nice. So we're I, having a lot of fun. I think bands, bands can either go one or two ways with the synth thing. Mm -hmm. like, I think it's, I think it's perfectly acceptable to have synth on a backing track. Like yeah. you, like it's it's money saving or whatever. But yeah. I think I really think it was bring me. Yes, when they got Jordan and then fucking can you feel my heart? Like I didn't realize he was playing it on drum pads, and then I saw a video of it, and I was like, oh my god, that's the coolest fucking thing ever. Pretty sick. And then everyone was like, oh cool, let's just it. when let's we get to that, that point. Let's do it live. Like you see architects doing it live now and stuff. That's it. That's the dream. But like everyone knows I have a fucking, I've got, I've got laptop beef, but our yeah. synths, we've got synthy bits now. We're, we're That's dip, it. dipping a synthy fucking toe in. Yep. And uh, we ain't bringing a guy. There's not enough of it to fucking do it. That's it. It's toe in the line. I think like, I don't know, if we were to do it, I'd like to put a spin on it so it's not just another sort of Jordan Fish ripoff, build like a hectic like kind of ghost kind of stage set up yeah. have like an altar or something that he's got the yeah shit like that what's the deal with the goggles speaking of stage the goggles so i love your stage shit thank you <laughs> thank you very much i'm an, I, i'll tell you this i'm not going to edinburgh so i'm annoyed that's fair. i thought he was in glasgow so oh, i'm gonna go i'm not going to edinburgh sorry <laughs> 
totally understand. Draw the line. I would probably would Especially if holding absence <laughs> might hate me. Might <laughs> go to be hated. <laughs> so the goggles started, it was kind of the gag, just um, avoid a vision type of blackout gag and the whole just, I don't know, dominatrix vibe of everything and we kind of introduced all the leather and the trimmings of such. And then basically as we released that first, um, the first EP, I started developing um, alopecia. So basically all the hair fell off my body. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a, I thought it was a style thing. No, yeah. It's fucking crazy. So basically, when was it? Wait Probably a like... minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm mind blown. Give me, the, give me the story. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. So yeah, basically um, all the hair started falling off my body and I, yeah, I was a bit like nervous at front, kind of just pulling that off at a level where basically you're in videos, you're live and... Do you know why? No idea, to be honest. When, no when was this? So, are you cool talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's like I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm nothing of the sort. And I know that there's side effects of the vax that we all signed off on. Cancel trigger, ready. <laughs> but it did happen after the second dose of um, <sighs> Pfizer. And I mean, if it happened, it might not have happened because of that. I went to my GP and to a dermatologist and they couldn't dial it down. And you know what? I'm like in the same boat. I've got all of them. I've got all the vaccines. I've got everything. Mm. My girlfriend got a blood clot. Yeah, funnily enough, also speaking of blood clots, not trying to top on to what already is also going on, but it was also January last year. So actually a year to the date today. So I woke up, well, I didn't wake up. I woke, I woke up in an ambulance and basically had a nocturnal seizure just out of fucking nowhere. I remember, I think I heard about this. Yeah, it's a pretty crazy story. Hit me. So I basically woke up in the back of an ambulance, I've gone to hospital. My partner's like luckily been in, because I, I just moved into an apartment and mm. I would have been there by myself if she didn't come over that night. And basically she's called up the ambulance. I've been sent off and this wasn't a nothing to do with, well, I don't know, to be honest. Um, but basically I was born with what's called like an AVM and it's called an atrovenal mal, oh God, AVM, atrovenal vascular malfun- malformation. And it's basically a giant pool or like a clot of um, veins in the middle of like where my brain is. And when that sort of, when they're all sort of pumping too hard to the fact that they choke each other off, the regular like keep yourself awake function doesn't work and it just puts you into seizure mode. And Was this the first time it happened? First time it's ever happened. And they, they even let me know that I was born with it and everything and it's just grown over time to the point where it becomes a bit of a danger. So basically they put me on this like really heavy um, epileptic medication and to stop me having nocturnal seizures basically throughout the year. What is it, gabapentin? It was levitrosam or Keppra. And um, basically I was just dosed up on that, couldn't drive, couldn't drink, couldn't have any of the fun stuff for about a year's end. And it's been a year now, sober, which is fucking wild. But um, basically I've been kind of going through that and going through the loops of the public health system in Australia for a year now and I've finally gotten to a point where they, they figured out they couldn't cut it out. So basically they just have to do the radiation therapy like three times this year and yeah, eventually clear it. But so you got to have radio radiotherapy. Yeah. <laughs> Which it weirdly like the side effect of that would be just this basically. So I've already covered bases with the hair loss. Fucking hell. <laughs> so what's the like what's the prognosis with it? Basically I need to get it out by the time I'm I, the older I get, the worse it's going to get. So basically I need to tackle it as soon as possible. So it's basically me preventing myself from having seizures until that point, which was kind of scary like going to America for the first time because we didn't know what necessarily would bring this thing on if it was like, I don't know, accentuated activity during the day or like stress um, that kind of like alleviates it. I have a feeling alcohol might have been something to do with it because I was – like getting pretty blackout drunk before that to the mm. point where I'd pass out and it hadn't really been a thing prior in my life and I was wondering why that was happening and then bam, that January happened. And Has it happened since? No, luckily enough. My partner's probably got like 
scared the shit out of her that night. So she probably thinks like every time I twitch in my sleep that I'm kind of like yeah, about fuck. to gear up for another one. But um, yeah, no, that's I guess just living with that and yeah. Uh, change think, your outlook? Yeah, big time. In what way? In the way that I kind of, I guess you can see the way how I dress on stage, how I perform and how I like put myself into the art now. It's just kind of I've got to do everything that I want to do in my life now. What's the point of fucking waiting? You just got to do you. everything as soon as it comes because who knows what tomorrow holds really. And the alope- alopecia is completely unrelated. Completely unrelated. I think that was... Yeah, I thought I kind you of were doing it from for that. style. Yeah. So if it, if it means anything, you're pulling it off. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very I literally much. <laughs> said, I literally was looking for your Instagram before this and yeah. I was saying to my girlfriend, I was like... This guy's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I like respect. I you that. don't see you don't see many people like because it in my head it was like a, a Billy Corgan thing. I was like you don't see right. You don't see people like committing to the fucking artist look. That's it. Yeah. Well, I was already was, shaving my head before that, and then maybe it was thrust upon you. Perhaps just the yeah. I don't know. But whatever it was, honestly, weirdly enough, it helped me push myself even further out there. So kudos to the alopecia gods looking down on me because have you like your purpose have you do you care not really anymore did you care at first first? yeah absolutely that was part of the goggles we did a music video where my eyes were covered in feathers because i didn't want people to see i didn't have oh yeah i remember that one yeah it was just small things like that for the beginning and like just doing the makeup to kind of hide it but now i just don't give a fuck it's just a part of me and so i'm gonna live i don't know like i could care but I see no point to be honest. It's it's part of that new perspective, I guess. Like, yeah, and it also helps with not caring what people think because it kind of translates into your art and how you present everything in your life and how you just act and carry yourself out in day to day worlds. And yeah, do you helps. do you have like is the sober thing difficult? Yeah. It was at the start. Yeah, is it, it like difficult. you have to be sober? It was yeah. So the first three months just mixing drinking i think it was three to six months i can't remember i couldn't drive for six months couldn't drink for three um but mixing this medication with the alcohol would have just like yeah just been messy so i just thought you know what like i've wanted to give this a crack for a while so this is probably the best time to do it and then i've just kind of got to the six months and i'm like i don't really feel like a beer i've had all like the alcohol free options and Honestly, a lot of them are quite delicious. Some of them, they're it's killing crazy it. what yeah. they're doing. And it's, I found within this year, it's only getting better. And yeah, I had a brew dog run the other night, I think. And it was really nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Brooklyn's got a good one. Yeah. Spe- special effects. Yeah. Pamela, what do you want? Do you want to be on the podcast? Come here. A little mention. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you can hear a little tiny little doggy. <laughs> Uh-huh. What we're doing, right? Can you see this this part of her hair here that's really long? That one, which we like to dread. That right there. So we usually shave her. I say we. She usually shaves her. <laughs> and um, what we did is we left one bit to see how long her hair would grow if we didn't shave her. And that's how long. So now we're just going to let her grow and just see she turns into some little fucking furball. Little gremlin. Furball thing. Um, <laughs> Before I was rudely interrupted by a lovely dog. Lovely I had an, dog. Another point. Yeah. About um I can't fucking remember. Who are we fucking talking about? What are we talking about? Something about being bald. Yeah. Oh, stage. Alcohol free. Alcohol free beer. Yeah. Right. They make good alcohol free beers. Absolutely. Uh, any weed? Any No, so like I just cut everything out and I was just I feel like I could really do with doing that. It was I I was honestly amazed. Honest to God, like I've never felt it's just brain fog be gone. Is there All any sudden, side effects from the medication? Slash, is there any pros? Because well, the reason I said gabapentin, yes, because I've had gabapentin before, which was prescribed for fucking restless legs of all things that are not an actual fucking disease, but they are. <laughs> but I used to get, re- and sometimes I still get it really, really bad restless yeah. legs. And they put me on gabapentin for a while. Okay, um, and it was also like it can help with your. Uh, anxiety and it because of the way it works they kind of there's kind of a conspiracy that it's the new oxy in terms of uh interesting they are prescribing it for everything okay. and it's quite difficult to come off but i remember when i was on it it was kind of like having two beers it was like it was like so 
I feel like for me, I I just drink to take the edge off life because there isn't an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety 100%. medication that I like. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'll just have a couple of beers and deal with it. That's it. And that was usually my go-to as well. And now opposed, I'm just raw dog in life, just trying to smash through, which was, it was interesting. It helped me build like, it just, I don't know, I can actually do things like, I don't know, life admin now. And I can sort of develop myself as a person and a human being without like just the brain fog, which I found from drinking and just drug use. And I don't know, it's just, it's super nice to see the other side and what it is like because without this scenario popping up, I probably would never would have tried because it's yeah. just too much fun. And that's what I found. Like I was probably, I don't know, if it's a year on, I'd have a beer just to see if I missed it. But yeah. The thing is, the alcohol-free ones, mm. as an Australian and as a Brit, we just love the taste of beer. Like, yes. If you can nail it alcohol-free, I'll drink it alcohol-free. The alcohol-free Guinness is fucking oh, outstanding. Yeah, exactly. If it tastes like Guinness, then exactly. it's a fuck. But I, I'd be interested to have it over here as opposed to because – funnily enough we were talking about it last night and Guinness doesn't travel well and mm. the, opposed to the one that you get in Dublin to over here it, re- it is good. a fucking lame thing to say but it really is better yeah it really fucking is it's like a- getting a haggis in Scotland <laughs> so much better <laughs> but yeah the the meds didn't really have uh, they kind of had side effects I guess it kind of played into the whole mild depression at the beginning of just losing all my fucking hair and everything it was just like decreased sex drive for a hot minute but that's like every fucking medication yeah, on earth pretty much it's it's pretty crazy that it's pr- that's probably the longest playing i guess side effect of the whole thing you ever get on the boner pills no i'm kind i'm kind of on the boner pills at the moment <laughs> <laughs> I've got, like Honestly, for the fuck well, I'm fucking 35. Not like not that my dick's not working, but no. like I got them to uh like someone told me because I I get fu- I'm going through like a a mild I used to drink every day right yeah so now I'm going through like a mild sober phase where I'm like I'll drink at an event yeah because I'm at home I'm on tour I drink every day because I need to get through the tour absolutely so kudos to you for not doing that yeah but it's so now I'm in my like experimental health drug stage where I'm like <laughs> well my brain needs to take drugs but what if I just make them like ones that can help with things and then I'm like. I'm also, this is going to get uh, too personal. So basically there's a side effect, a positive, there's a, there's a boner pill, which, is, <laughs> which has A, gym benefits, yeah. but B, it has benefits for a part of the man's anatomy that is prone to getting cancer, right? Ah. Which runs in my family. Oh, okay. Uh, and I was like, and it's like, there's studies of it being like preventative or whatever. And I was like, well... What's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to get loads of bonus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's Price like, I'm willing so to it's like taking it like a couple of times a week before the gym. You get mad pumps in the gym and then mad boner pumps as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll chuck you some. And <laughs> tell you what, we'll, you know, I'll let you know how I go. It might fucking work. <laughs> um, anyway, enough about my boner pills. That, <laughs> imagine if I had one of the boner pill sponsors as well. That'd be perfect. Oh, boner pill companies. I'm, u- I'm using your shit. <laughs> Give me a shit, right? And if, before anyone thinks it emasculates me, the boners were fine. Now it's like a, you've got a, you got a, a 1.8 petrol engine. It's fine. I guess you've made a B. Turbocharge. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do a dream festival? <laughs> I'd love to do a dream festival. Do we need festival. to plug anything else? What you got? Are you working on another album? Oh, we are. We're working on the record now. So basically... We're doing some bits and bobs over here after the tour is wrapped up, after the headliners. So just a bit of extra work on the new material and yeah, it's all like surprise, surprise stuff for now. But yeah, there'll be music this year. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll do. We've done bonus. We've done the... buy. Oh shit, we should probably say you can buy that. You can buy it and we'll have it at the merch desk on this tour. Really? Mm. Now, you don't have to answer this. Do you know if my cut, I still get that from the ones that you sell at merch? <laughs> because I'm on a per unit. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Kate Lawrence, if you're watching, please reply to my DMs. <laughs> are you finding that out? <laughs> I'm going to find that out after this podcast. Cause, cause <laughs> they are limited, but I'm on a, if you want to support the podcast, I'm on a sort of uh, on a little split of this. I don't know if uh, Jack, Jack actually knew. <laughs> I did. But, um, 
I'm on a little split. Hopefully the ones from the merch stand sell out before... No, no, we don't want that. We want the people from the podcast to be able to buy it. That's it. I mean, there's only a limited amount we've got in the van. And we sold out of the normal ones. So that's all I've got. Funnily enough, at the merch test the other night, I went to grab one and I'm like, oh, can't put that out. I mean, you can. Yeah, I probably could have. I do like money. But this, yeah, I love it. It's good. That's a, I live in the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all right, that's a plug. We're done. It's not a professional <laughs> fucking thing. Dream Festival. Dream Festival. I'm going to talk you through it. Have you, have you pre thought of this? I haven't really, but. I've okay. just I've got a dream festival in my head anyway. Okay. Don't I've got don't, a concept. Don't say a fuck. Uh, there, see, yeah, now you've thought of it. I love it when <clears> someone. <throat> this is what my it's got to help you. It's so people's um, favorite part um, of the podcast, and I'm starting to think that people want to come here to, to do their dream festival. My dream, mm-hmm. my dream podcast is that people come. Mm-hmm. We do about half the amount of time that we did. Yes. which is not. I didn't have a bad time. But then just for ease, like, so on Friday, I've got, I'm doing someone I've never met before. Yeah. In fact, I cancelled it. But I was doing someone I've never met before. Massive person. Oh, right. I'll tell you who it was. It was Frankie Arrow. Right. That's but, pretty good. That would have been nice. Yeah, but two issues with it. Oh. Got an email saying, you're not allowed to mention My Chemical Romance. And I was a bit like... That's a big like, catch. <laughs> I don't, know what I, I, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what would say because I'm not like a MTR fan. Yeah. But then also, like, what do you mean I can't mention it? Like, it's a big part if of If something history. comes up and I go, yeah. well, how? And it's not like that. Yeah, inactive. I'm not going to go like, oi, what about fucking Gerard? Is he cool? Like, I don't care. Does he look, does he look like a fucking guy? <laughs> like, obviously appreciate what I've done. Anyway, but then yeah. it was like a whole thing where it was like, They've got to be in and out in an hour. Yeah. Right. So if oh. the Dream Festival was the main event, mm-hmm. if for some reason for this gets back to him, I do really want you here. But <laughs> I, I was told by the press agent I've only got an hour, including travel. So if it was a Dream Festival was the it main just event, up an exactly, yeah. then they could come in, boom, Dream Festival, leave. But currently, people like a little chat. We had a little Jakarta chat. We had another piece of chat. We had a boner chat. The whole shebang. And then now we get the Dream Fest. Yeah. Then you go to Edinburgh, you have a lovely time. Exactly. To not drink whiskey. I'm trying to think what you could do. Not much. Castle. I wouldn't mind a bug fast while I'm here, but that's the only problem. Oh, no, you can't. That would be... It's blood clot central. It is, it's isn't it? designed to give you a brain <laughs> clot. Um, okay, Dream <laughs> Festival. We're going to go. I'm going to talk you through it. Mm-hmm. You know, you come from one of my favourite parts of the world and my dream festival would be in, in Melbourne. But where is your dream festival going to be located? It would be in Australia. Yeah. I, I'm going to say Melbourne too. Just just to have... Do you live in Melbourne? Yes, live in Melbourne. Awesome. It's best. I'm unbiased best. Are you at home without leaking anything? Mm-hmm. I'm not about to leak anything. I'm about to leak something. Are you at home in May? Or are you on tour? We are at... Yeah, we're at home in May. I might see you. Amazing. <laughs> I might see you. I, I think I've heard. Yes. Cool. Very good. Um, what? So you, you're, in, you're in Melbourne? Yeah. What time of year? Time of year, it would be not hot summer. Well, at the moment, who fucking knows when that is? It's been very turbulent in Melbourne at the moment. But probably like a November... Yeah, November festival in Melbourne. It would have to be in a location. I don't want to do just a regular run in the mill location. How dream is this? How dream festival is this? It like can is, be is Freddy Krueger on the guest list? Is um, he... Will Putney's audience was dogs. Like it's okay. insane. All right. It's insane. Yeah. Okay. Fair go. So if you're doing it. <sighs> it's going to be probably. I'd love to do an arena festival just because well, our version of arena is like the Melbourne cricket ground. It's probably the biggest. Biggest shabong there, but you've got the whole outside is like a whole kind of, I don't know. It's not like Wembley here. You've got, it kind of is actually, you've just got the surrounds that you could open up pop-ups all around. Oh, okay. You could have the main stage inside the arena and then everything on the outside. And Does anything yeah. of this pl- just play into the fact that you won't have to travel very far? Is That's that it. why it's Melbourne? And friends. Weather's pretty good. Yeah. Friends are pretty good. That's okay. It. I think I'd love to see family and friends there. So that's definitely part of that. What's catering? Catering is... Have you... Are you uh, 
vegan diet or anything? Or? And I've done it before. Mm-hmm. Done it for six months. Have you ever I, heard of Smith and Daughters in Melbourne? Catering is Smith yeah. and Daughters. Shannon, Shannon Martinez is cooking the whole fucking plate. Fuck yeah. She's whipping up. She's bringing the whole deli. It's just all catered and bloody is it home like, designed. Is it like... I can't remember what it is. Is it like fucking meat? Like yeah. bougie so, butcher style meat, but Essentially. Vegan. So she's, I think she's not even veg. Like the her partner, I think it's Mo Wise in the business, is the vegan one. And she just adapts her recipes from a meat eater's point of view. And she just whips up the most insane dishes that I've ever had. And now it's like the most bougie restaurant you can go to for vegan stuff in Melbourne. It's an awesome experience. You just pay per head. And they kind of just put it in front of you and you go nuts. Fuck yeah. And I'd like that to be Are you exactly vegan? at the festival. Yeah. How long has that been? Seven years now. So yeah. So you're not going to get him on the hair shit, right? <laughs> oh, you should eat a fucking steak and then blah, blah, blah. That's it. <laughs> just preempting the fucking preempting the, 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 comment. the YouTube comments. <laughs> Still leave that comment though because the algorithm, okay? It's don't, good. Don't, don't be mean. Yeah, don't be, be nice. fucking mean. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's it called? Smith and... Smith and Daughters. Smith and um, Daughters. I only said Smith and Wesson, but that's guns. That's guns. Mm. And then Smith and Deli is the delicatessen version. So it's like all a... It's kind of like a New York kind of stuff. That's style. the one that I'm thinking of. That's I remember stuff. just getting like fucking sandwiches and shit yeah. from there. It's the fucking best. It's Fuck so it. nice. All right, they're doing catering. Well, catering down. Ideal, ideal drink situation then. There'll be elk freeze, but I want everyone else to be... What I've really enjoyed about being sober is watching everyone else around me. Like I can, st- I've learned you enjoy I can still it. fucking love it because I just, it, it just like makes you think I can also get on that level just from, I don't know, being around good character and just happiness. Oh, when someone's too drunk though and you're sober. Yeah, not that. Oh, it's the worst. Then I just when someone's away. coked up and you're sober, it's fucking That's the true you're unbearable. Off, yeah, it's not great. Just oh. fucking relax. I've got a... <laughs> Come on. Got a terrible Europe bus story for you after. I won't name names. Oh, but, what? Yeah. I can't have it with a name excluded. Don't say anything that you're going to ask me to edit out afterwards because I'm just not going to do it. I can't so, say oh, it. Right, there we go. <laughs> the amount of people that do that. Oh, can you edit that bit out? No. I'll, say, I'll save the chop. Thank you. No, you're right. <laughs> the, the audience will be incredibly disappointed. Is there anything that you really, really, really miss that you can't get alcohol free? Because we can put that. So, currently, this is just a festival. There's no dream involved. That's it. I mean... I love Bloody Marys, especially at a festival. You're waking up in the morning if it's like, you know, like the, you do, you've done a Unify festival oh, in Australia. Yeah, only yeah. Once. Is download the same where you camp or no? Uh, I mean, you can. Yeah. But you wake up in the morning, get early to the festival yeah. the day after. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have a drink first thing off the bat, Bloody Mary. Best. Is there no alcohol free Bloody Mary? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we've got those on. I'll hit Bloody we've Marys. Got, and I'm sure if you put like, I'm sure it's not great for you, but like, some bleach in a tomato, <laughs> tomato juice. Get some form of a sauce. kick. No, it'd be like that vodka, like, taste. Don't do that. No one do that. The alcohol-free vodka is pretty interesting too. I, see, I think I'd draw the line on spirits. Be like, it's not. Because I like, I love a sugar-free drink. Like yeah. A, oh, sh- a sugar-free no mad drink. Like, yeah. No a, sugar-free Sprite. Zucker, zucker fry. Zucker the best fry. is the fucking... <laughs> I, I literally, I should get a fucking endorsement. The uh, Coca-Cola freestyle machines. Yeah. Where you can just go Fanta fucking strawberry, still zero sugar. Like that's my, if I could have those everywhere, I reckon I could stop drinking. Yeah. But the issue is everyone's just like, oh, Pepsi, fucking Coca-Cola. I'm like, this is a Zucker Ooh. Fry Festival. So is yes. it? Nice. No sugar. See, I I love that, and I'll be that guy that gets like yesterday. I was that guy. I went to Five Guys mm. and diet drink, and everyone's like, "Oh, you no, it's fucking eight hundred less calories." Okay, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get wham, <laughs> fucking relax. <laughs> okay, Zucca Free Fest. Um, we're in Melbourne Cricket Ground. Mm-hmm. So far, there's no dream. Um, it's about who? Oh, yeah. Who's headlining? Can they be, is it dead or alive? You can do whatever you want. Can so, this be like, can I gather the rights for Resurrection Fest from Spain? And call, and basically... It's called Resurrection Fest, it yeah. It is, and I'm just resurrecting all the bands that are, all the people that I would have loved to see. Okay. Are you, are they really, are they, they never died? Oh, no, they're dead. They're dead, but they are reanimated. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's like not to the point where it's like hologram and everyone knows. It's, it's kind of like the it's, real person. It's the real person. We've inve- designed a way to get them back. Absolutely. Okay, now we're in Dream Festival world. Absolutely. Because we had it before. I've had holograms. Holograms aren't going to cut it for and me. And I've had Freddie Mercury never died in the first place. But I've <laughs> never actually had re like this is absolutely risen from the grave. Yeah, zombies. Like, but are they zombied? No, they're nice zombie. They they're collected zombified. So a slight maybe the white balance is off. Just All they remember to do is perform. Camera talk. All they remember to do is perform. Oh wow, that's yeah. like the muscle memories there. Yeah, been, that's. I imagine that would stick that around when you're dead. Human rights violation in that. Like, there's no <laughs> yeah, law for that. This festival is going down after yeah. a year. This yeah. is an A twenty four movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so who's headlining? Prince. Nice. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I could go really ham on this. And you could just have Prince. You could have Bowie. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would be great. You could have Michael Hutchins in excess. I feel like if they if they did develop this, mm-hmm. arguably, you know, quite human rights violating, it's not even human rights, dead, zombie dead rights. zombie rights violating mm. technology, mm. they would go all out with the first one. Absolutely. You'd, yeah, you'd play all your cards. Before... Who the, knows if it... Yeah. yeah. The, the fucking health committee is going to be like, yeah. oh, you guys, we can't do this. This is absolute one note only stuff. Did you hear about Peter Steele biting someone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this isn't going to go yeah. well. <laughs> You'd have Keith Flint prodigy. Oh, wow. It would be all up there. It's yeah. quite a party, party fest. Oh, yeah, so sorry. The only rule is that Void of Vision are playing. So. Oh, oh, okay. So We'd open. Yeah. Yeah. Get it all out of the way, done and early. Actually, what's your accommodation? I'd like people to be there. What's your accommodation? Accommodation. I should really learn to do this in the right order. So it should be location, yes. catering, accommodation. Because you are playing. Where would you like to stay in regards to the festival? I'd love wherever we do stay for... It would have to be just like... It's going to be too hard to get this in Melbourne. But basically we played a festival last New Year's in a castle in a regional place in Australia with Parkway and Polaris and it was wow. magnificent and I'd love for every artist to stay in the same castle and then it's just absolute kick on and you get to meet Prince and you get to meet Bowie. I'm sure they wouldn't want a bar of Void of Vision but... Oh, uh, it's your dream so maybe they're fans. I feel like even in my dream they'd hate me. But that's just so wait, are you staying in a castle now? I think so. We'd fly down to Ballarat to Corral Castle. Private jet. Private jet. MCG. That's cool. Mm. And we're actually still at the cricket ground. Yeah. Prince. It's on the roof. Ready Prince, to go. you're going to have to line this up for me. Mm. Oh, that's a hard line. Yeah, you're going to have to do it. You can have two stages. You can have two days. Two stages. Yeah. So Prince Bowie. Nice. In excess prodigy. Nice. I wonder who else. It's crazy because I met... I, like, Michael Hutchins can't, uh, obviously you've, you've, you've told us that all he can do is remember to play the songs, mm. but I'm sure he's going to, someone's going to be annoyed at the fact they're not headlining because you've got all these people, it's a big deal, all these people it coming back from deal. the grave. Oh, big time. And everyone's <laughs> like, well, wait a minute. Actually, that's a good point. I mean, also, no. this after party would be terrible. Just thinking about There's the only muscle zombies. memory, bunch of zombies, and all yeah, they know the, is to perform. The rest of the band are there, yeah, and and the actual the, the, yeah, the living members, the living members, and then the zombies are they're kind of carrying their mate around like weekend of Bernies, weekend of Bernies, weekend of Bowies. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh, I knew this were, would be you were a legend. Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um. Okay, who is? I need a smaller band. I need smaller a band. smaller band. That, I guess you guys are a smaller band, so just we a are. band that you're into. That maybe more people need to know about. I'm gonna say Thornhill for the sake of plugging their GoFundMe right now, mm-hmm. because they just got a hundred thousand dollars worth of gear stolen. Oh, I and if I could that. possibly plug this on this podcast, this would be the time to do that. Yeah, what happened? Give me a little. So basically. They're good friends of ours and they. The, the, I'm kind of getting at it as why I know this exact scenario. Basically, yeah. there's a giant warehouse that um, the drummer Ben's father sort of owns. It's a business. 
Um, it's a giant fruit shop basically functioning out of there and they've got a little sort of prac space involved in that giant headquarters. And basically there's a big and like kind of – I won't go too far into it, but there was a big fire. They'd caught the whole warehouse on fire. Only thing left untouched was their little prac space, this little brick building. And basically from the looks of it, it's a lot of – these buildings that burned down in Melbourne especially, it's not a great sort of area where it was. A lot of squatters sort of come in and from the looks of it, they've just basically come across and they couldn't access this place because it was a criminal investigation because of the fire and it looks like basically some squatters have broken in and just stolen a bunch of their gear, literally all of their gear though. They can't find it. Yeah, and they're on tour with Architect in like a week <sighs> in Australia, which is a... That sucks. And it hasn't come up on eBay or anything like that. No, so they keep an eye out and there's that area. You've got cash converters here, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's generally yeah, yeah. where you see it pop in. But, but they don't have any air tags or anything. Well, that's the thing. They they do. But I'm wondering if it's just on their gear for when they're flying and touring mm. and they take it out. Le- le- lesson for everyone. Air tag your fucking gear, even if it's in your practice room. Saved our skin on this tour. Did it? Our guitars didn't leave Melbourne. And you could see. And we could see. They didn't believe us, but we could see. I had the weirdest thing when I was moving house mm. where I had AirTag found follow, uh, moving with you and you could see the locations and it was my old flat, my practice studio and here. Uh-huh. And you could see the thing going. So someone had fucking tagged my car and I, no never, I never found the tag. Wow. Uh, and I just sold, I sold that car because I couldn't find the fucking tag. That's not why I sold it, but I needed to sell it anyway. But Fair sold. enough. But it was weird. That's yeah, fucking I, weird. I don't know if it was the movers because they saw the shit and they wanted to see. But that that was, makes sense. It was fucking yeah, weird. Fuck. Okay. Very weird. Damn. So air, air, air tag your shit. But don't don't air tag other people's shit. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. Um, and donate to Thornhill. Donate to Thornhill. Uh, what is the after party? The after party? Oh, jeez. So this is your flying dream, straight your, to Burkheim. This is your dream. Oh, <laughs> straight yeah, to the Burkheim for the, the debut. Doing that sober. Yeah, you're gonna see some shit. That's it. I, I just feel like I just need to harness life before I can do that. Essentially, and I'd, I'd, I'd need to be the most comfortable I could be, living real life, to enter I'm, that building. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go next time we're in Berlin. If it's if it's, it's kind of quintessential, off. isn't it? Kind of like I feel like I owe it to myself. You've earned a treat. Fuck, it's just, just a disgusting little time out. I think it I would be to, fun. I, I couldn't do it sober though, so yeah. Power it's to you, but vibe. I'll be fucked up my brain. I don't think I wrote that song when I was sober too, so it didn't really translate uh, in time. So it was probably was, was a real, a, a real primi- primitive urge to kind of go to this venue. Yeah, prior, but, but I'm still fucking fascinated. What's the track after <laughs> it? Dominatrix is after it. Yes, on that. Yeah, it must have deal with dominatrix. It is what it is, essentially. <laughs> Basically, yeah, Hornberg song. And you ever get you ever go to a dominatrix? No. See, sometimes I'm like, but I'm a fucking psycho. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> sometimes mm. I would say in my let's see now we get right to the end mm-hmm. the real deep cuts. Mm-hmm. I would say in my sexuality, mm-hmm. I am. For the most part, dominant, right? Mm-hmm. But when something I'm, about when I'm feeling like a piece of shit, there's a little bit of switch in me where I'm like, I want someone to just fucking punch me in the fucking face and then peg me back to the real world. <laughs> back it's very reality. rare. It's when I'm right at the bottom. And I'm like, I don't want to get me out of this. Someone just treating me like how I feel. <laughs> it's escapism, and at the end of the day, it's yeah, that's how it is. Nice. That's basically the song. Yeah. Nice. A sense of escapism. Horny escapism. Mm-hmm. Um, by the fucking, I think we've done it. Yeah, I've done the. I've done is that the, the festival, right? Yeah, done, after done the party's festival. wrap. We've finished the after we, party we, with we, the zombies. We plugged Chronic. Mm-hmm. Chronic. The Chronic version, the chronic. which you can pick up, I guess. Um. It'll be on U- UNFDs. I'll put it in the description on this. Mm-hmm. Um, what you got coming up tour-wise that We've you can say? Don't say anything. That Remember, this goes out on, I think, February, I think maybe Valentine's Day. Oh, so lovely. anything uh, d- delicious. We and have... Anything post then that you can... 
Polaris 10 year anniversary tour in Australia. 10 fucking years. Mm. That band's been going for 10 years. Crazy. And so have we. How long have I been going? <laughs> <laughs> you are all so new to me. I know. It's bizarre, isn't it? Oh my God. That this is, is the depressing. New no, mate. It's going to be the whole future. All these bands, it's going to take so much longer to get off the ground. It think doesn't about the next no, come up. Think about fucking all the other bands that come out of nowhere. Think about Bad Omens. Like, how long do you reckon they would have been a band for? Three years. How long have they been a band for? It's not three. I think it's like reaching towards ten. Really? Potentially. I may be very wrong. No, but I think the you thing might is, be right. Like, it just takes a, a bit longer to kind of... They are the biggest fucking band in the world. Which is like fucking crazy. I, I, I got... I got a lot of respect for all these bands that get massive. I kind of love it. I love, I love, again, like I'm saying about me getting fucking old and being like, I actually love to see younger people. I'm only 35. I'm on a fucking bone pill. I'm only 35. Here we go. Perfect. Um, and I'm like, I see younger people getting really fucking like, vehemently into a band and I'm like mm. good for you good for the band and good for you it's awesome to see I'm pulling up this um, I'm curious to know how long formed in 2015 so yeah oh, crazy. eight years there you go but, uh, formed by vocalist frontman and producer Noah Sebastian I didn't know he did all that genius um, straight up genius I've I've talked with him I think I've said one word to him very, <laughs> a man of zero words but I don't know if he was doing. I don't know if he was doing that. I'm a uh, creepy method acting vampire man, or I don't know if it's he was cool, saving though. his fucking voice because he's doing fucking weekend and screaming. Mm. Or I don't know if he maybe he just didn't like me. <laughs> All of these are very real possibilities. So much guidance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So that Polaris tour is coming, and then not fest after that. The first one in Australia. Whoa. With Bad Omens as well, which would be a riot. Do you know what? I've said this on the podcast. I got offered to do some shit there, I guess, the press. For Australia? Yeah, but I'm on tour. <sighs> I'm in a transit van. I'm on a fucking European transit ra- van tour with bunks. Instead of going no, to say. Australia for free to talk to people. That's rough. So annoying. I was really up for it. It would have been nice. I was. <laughs> but you'll be back. I'll be honest with you. I was Perhaps. debating just doing it anyway. Yeah, and then. Fair. We got off at Australia and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, at least I'm going to Australia for free. That's it. All right, we've covered me getting pegged. We've covered <laughs> a- alopecia. We've ke- covered boner pills. We've covered the this Dream Festival. Extensive. We've covered uh, brain clots. Mm-hmm. Um, I might but I'll probably edit a little bit out for advertising reason- reasons. Mm-hmm. So you'll just have to imagine what we talked about there. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. I'd be able to, what's this ring? That's nice. It's like some real stones here going on there. That's fucking yeah. cool. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your show in uh, Edinburgh. Thank you, mate. We'll Check do. out Void of Vision. Absolutely. Buy a vinyl because it helps all of us. That's it. <laughs> Goodbye. Peace.